Good evening, everybody. It is Bob Ferguson, and I am about to go talk to you about turtles as conservation conversation number three. Uh, this is a series I'm doing. I'm going to run through all 12 choices of calendars I have this year. Real quick, if you don't know what this is about, every year for the last eight years, this is year nine, I've made up calendars with my own pictures that I've taken myself out in the field and have sold them for 20 bucks a piece, five for 90 because they're great for gifts. Um, and I give all of the profits, every cent of the profits go to a conservation charity. The last few years, it's been the Rainforest Trust. It's probably going to be the Rainforest Trust next. That's to be determined. But if you buy one of these calendars, rest assured, it is going to go towards conservation of wildlife usually land protection or acquisition because when you save land, you save everything. So maybe you don't like turtles. Maybe you think they're weird or they're scary. You're gonna save birds. You're gonna save the flora. You're gonna save all the insects. You're saving everything. So that's why I look to do land acquisition or purchase with the proceeds from these calendars. So let's get right into it because last time I only went 17 minutes. The first time I went 40 and I'm very long winded. Like I said, we're going to do this. So this year it's turtles, but it is turtle faces. Last year I did only box turtles. So it's been two years since I've had a mix of turtles in a calendar. So there's your cover. That's an Eastern box turtle. Let's get into it. First turtle spotted turtle. Got a cute little face with that little beak and those eyes. They're black with yellow spots. This is one of the first turtles I find in the year because they use vernal pools and they come out super early. I guess the sun just heats up the water and they're not too deep in the mud and they come out and you can see them when you've had a few sunny days in March. I love these guys. I do want to say something really quick though. If you find any of these turtles really, this, this is a, a big one. Just keep the spots to yourself because these are very easy to grab put in your pocket and sell people poach these things all the time so if you have turtle spots keep them to yourself please i'm not i'm not trying to make this unfun though let's not make this a lecture but there are certain things i need to feel i need to talk about number two february the eastern spiny soft shell look at that little snorkel nose there we actually have these in bucks county they are actually an introduced species, but they do breed here. Uh, so they're not native, but the general consensus is they're not harming any of the populations. They're not like red-eared sliders where they outcompete and take over everything. So Eastern spiny soft shell, cute little turtle for February. Number three, if you're in most of the United States, you've probably seen one or another subspecies of the painted turtle. This is an Eastern painted turtle. Hopefully this is coming through uh, with the light here. I'm just still trying to work on getting it br uh, not too bright, but bright enough. Because when I've uploaded this, it's been a little bit grainy. But rest assured, these are all high quality. You can see the calendar. It's nice and thick. If you've bought before, you know what to expect. It's the same company, same printing company. Just different pictures. So that's the Eastern Spot, or I'm sorry, Eastern Painted Turtle. We're going to move on to April. Common snapping turtle. See these guys a lot on roads. Uh, I've actually done a YouTube video on how to move them safely off of a road. If, you know, I know it's November, but if spring rolls around and you start seeing turtles on the road, feel free to message me for any answers to your questions. Uh, potentially dangerous. They can really put a hurting on you. So just stay away from the business end. But these guys, they're, they're just... They're nomadic and they are generalists and they eat whatever they want. They go whatever they want. They're a very successful species. May, back to the Eastern box turtle. One of my absolute favorites to find, probably my favorite to find. Um, they just come in a million different colors. If you had my box turtle calendar from last year, I put 12 very different looking box turtles in that calendar. And when, you know, if I find a dozen turtles in a year, which I can do more if I really want to, um, they're all going to look different. They can be orange, yellow, red. Uh, so I even found one that was a little purplish with orange spots on it. it it's insane. It was actually in the calendar last year. So that's everybody's favorite Eastern spotted turtles. <laughs> hey, 
Diana, five for 90. They're, gift, they're great gifts. But um, anyway, I don't want to hard sell you, but I appreciate the support so far. All right, where was I? I lost my place. Oh, box turtles. Everybody wants to take these home as pets. Do not take them home as pets. They can live upwards. Actually, they can live 70, 80 years. There was actually a box turtle just found that had 1924 carved in the uh, or the the um, the plastron, which is the bottom of it. So if if that's legit, that's what? That's almost 100 years old, 96 years old. That's incredible. So when you take one out, you're taking a very old, mature breeding adult out of a population that is already hit by collectors, by, by you know, harmless people just thinking they want to have a cute, easy pet for their kids or whatever. But I'm, I'm just asking you to please do not do it. They suffer enough from poaching for illegal pet trade and for a road mortality is horrible for these guys. We build roads through their habitat and they get crushed constantly. I see so many dead ones on roads. So if you are fortunate enough to see one in the woods or in a, a field, just, you know, enjoy it, take pictures. You know, I don't care if you pick it up. Some people are gonna tell you to leave it alone. Enjoy it, just leave it though. You know, that's all I'm asking. All right, June. All right, every single June, I live about an hour and a half from the Jersey coast. These guys, Diamondback Terrapins, absolutely stunning turtles. The only turtle that lives in marsh, in brackish water, which is where uh, salt water mixes with fresh water. The only turtle in the world that does that. These guys also get hammered on the roads. All the causeways to the beach, uh, all cut through their marshes. In June, they have to come up to lay eggs and they need to find land that's above the water to dig and lay their eggs in. And, you know, with the shore traffic and everybody speeding everywhere, they just, they get absolutely annihilated and it's super sad. So it's been a running tradition for my family. Uh, sometimes I take all the kids, some, now that they're older, some are working. Sometimes I do go a lot. This year I went with my wife and we set our record. We go out and we save turtles. You know, we move them across the road. We actually had like, I believe 70 something in two and a half hours this year. And we could have went all day, but we just try to get it out there once a year, do our part. We usually go to um, some slower roads. I, I kind of have it pinpointed when they come up. Um, I figure them out basically. We go to some slower roads, get some good looks at them, and then we'll usually go to heavier, quicker roads. But that said, uh, you know, you can't win them all and you definitely cannot put your life on the line for a turtle because, you know, if you want to be emo and say, you know, a turtle is worth more than you, great. You can't save any more turtles if you're dead. So remember that. Do not put your life on the line to save any animal because if you're a good steward for these guys and you want to move anything off the road, remember everything you could have moved off the road, you can't if you're in a coffin. July, Northern Red-Bellied Turtle or Northern Red-Bellied Cooter. Uh, these guys actually in my home state of Pennsylvania are a threatened species. In New Jersey, I hop across the river, they're everywhere. Why is that? Because they are so successful in the coastal plain. I don't mean to geek out on you or anything, but really quick, uh, we go from coastal plain to Piedmont, which is like more rockier soil. Uh, for whatever reason, these guys do best in coastal plain. And in Pennsylvania, that's, I live in Bucks County, which is the county right above Philadelphia. Bucks County is split with coastal plain into Piedmont. And Philadelphia is all coastal plain, but Philadelphia is the, uh, you know, concrete forest now. So you don't have too many turtles down there, but these guys used to persist in this Southeast corner of Pennsylvania. Now you don't see too many of them. Go over to New Jersey, you're gonna see them everywhere. But they have a really cool eye that you can kind of see this one's greenish. This is an old individual, but sometimes they're really turquoise blue. Beautiful, beautiful turtles. Again, just help them cross the road in the spring when you see them. Always in the direction they're going. August, a federally threatened bog turtle. Again, this is actually technically illegal to go look for. I've had the privilege of being on some bog turtle surveys. So, you know, that's really the only way you can do it uh, legally. Um, 
very small turtle, maybe like this big, an adult. Uh, it got that very distinct orange block blotch on the side. Again, another thing, it, I mean, I don't expect too many people watching this to ever have even heard of a bog turtle or seen them in the wild. But if for some reason you have, report it to your state and report it to nobody else because these guys will be poached. All right, this is uh, admittedly the only non-wild turtle I have. For now, I actually am hoping very soon to get a shot at alligator snapping turtles. This is a friend of mine's uh, captive turtle. Just probably my number one turtle I want to see in the wild in the entire country. Uh, they have that, they're, they're just, they can be giants. You, have you ever seen a big snapping turtle? These guys will dwarf them. They can be huge, over 100 pounds. They hold that mouth open. If you've ever seen like a Jeff Corwin or Steve Irwin show about these guys, they have this little pink thing in their bottom of their mouth, like right in here. I don't have it in here. And they'll wiggle it around so that fish will go after it thinking it's a worm or an invertebrate or something and then snap. And they get them. Amazing, prehistoric, dinosaur-looking turtles. And... I promise that next year I'm going to have a wild one in here because it's a big goal of mine and should happen soon. Uh, this, this is one of the best memories of this year. The pandemic had started. Uh, people were all kind of trapped in their houses for a little bit. I think I went, I decided to take a trip up to New England in, it was probably late April. I have good friends living up there and they know how and where to find Blanding's turtles. This was my lifer. Look at that yellow chin. What an awesome, awesome freaking turtle, right? So we, it was the beginning of the pandemic. I was just, you know, when, when you're a naturalist or just outdoorsy like me, you're a lifelong social distancer anyway. So I, you know, I wasn't, even though everybody was scared, I, I was safe around gas pumps and went up and walked in the woods in a different state. And I got to see three or four of these. I got to see two up close. This was my life where I saw two others out on logs, uh, but what an incredible turtle. And we don't have these here in New Jersey. Pennsylvania, I believe we have some population up in the Northwest corner of the state, but that's like six hours. I was able to drive to Massachusetts in four and a half. So, you know, I'm at the complete other opposite end of Pennsylvania. Amazing turtle. Really cool chin. I just, I, I'm in love with the chin. I just, it's one of these things I was, uh, you know, I, I have cute aggression. Anyway, let's move on. November, going down south for gopher tortoises. These guys are so cool. You know, they're not the prettiest things in the world, but they're like little tanks just, just walking around until, you know, you think they're just lumbering along like a box turtle would or something until they get scent of you and think that you might be a predator. These guys can book. And what's really cool about these is they're what's called an indicator species. What that means is in within their habitat, or I'm sorry, the words escaping me for now, I'll put it in the comments. Um, but they, they, they build burrows into the ground that house tons of other animals. So a keystone species, so a little nervous, I guess, a uh, keystone species. So other species depend on these guys. So if these get poached out or if, you know, road mortality takes too much of a shot on their population, everything else is going to suffer. So while they're pretty numerous in their habitat or in, and in their areas, they are a keystone species and they need to be protected. We're gonna move on to the last one. If it wasn't for the box turtle, tur this is a top three for me. Wood turtles. I actually did a 10 facts wood turtles YouTube video as one of my first uh, 10 facts about species videos I did because I'm so enamored with the natural history of these guys. Again, very easily collected out of the wild. So if you know of a wood turtle population, keep it to yourself. That said, uh, 
these guys are incredible. They, I, I've found these in the snow. I don't take them out of the water in the snow, but like there's snow on the ground and I've had instances, I've had my kids out, there was snow on the ground, it was 52 degrees, but there was a lot of snow, so, you know, it wasn't melting or anything, it was still March. And these guys are literally up on the bank, basking in, in or snow-covered grass, like, just taking in that, that heat of the sun. It's amazing to find turtles out in the snow. I have actually found one at 28 degrees and I went in, this is my earlier days, I wouldn't do this now. And actually I didn't, I only kept it out of the water for 30 seconds. That's neither here nor there, shouldn't have did it. But anyway, I got into the water and the water, it, I mean, it was running water. So they're not gonna go into water that freezes, but it, the water couldn't have been more than 34 degrees. And here's this turtle just sitting in it. Like what a freaking warrior these guys are. I just, I love finding them. There's one of the first, um, trips I take when the season starts outside of like amphibian migration if it happens early enough in March or even late February sometimes but like mid-March I'm looking for like a string of warm days to get these guys active to get out and just kind of kick off the season I love these guys so anyway that is the calendar that I'm calling turtle faces this year there's the plate again these are $20 a piece I have 12 choices you can get at me just message me on facebook on instagram or i even have an etsy um shop now that i had to bump up to 25 bucks because it's more for like people that i don't talk to all the time and i gotta cover the fees but listen if you want calendar a calendar or multiple calendars just message me uh, if you've bought from me in the past i'm going to be messaging you so i don't apologize for it because the money goes to something that i believe in and I'm really proud of and I really appreciate all the support in the past. So I don't mind uh, asking people for their support again. It gives me a chance to catch up with everybody because we're all busy, right? One last thing. Um, the printing company raised the rates on these two years ago. And I had a really successful campaign last year in where I started offering... Oh, sitting cross like way too long. Hold on. S um, started offering framed pictures that hang on your wall, framed and ready to go. I sell these for $289 normally. You can be entered into a raffle for $5 an entry. Uh, I actually had somebody buy one calendar off me today and give me 40 bucks. So she's going to be entered into the raffle. She'll have four separate entries. Every 50 entries I get, I will draw an email out of the hat live on Facebook and the winner will get, not this, they'll get to choose whatever picture they want. You don't have to like Timbers. This is simply just a, an example that I had from um, the Pinelands Preservation Pho Photography Contest. But you can say, hey, Bob, you know, I really like box turtles. Can you show me all your box turtle pictures? I will show you all my box turtle pictures. And you will pick one that you like and it'll be shipped to your door if you win for a $5 entry to help me cover the, the rise in printing costs so that I can donate just as much money as I have in the past. Last year I donated $6,600 to the Rainforest Trust for land acquisition in the Peruvian Amazon. Um, if you look at those, those box turtles and you decide, ah, that you know, his box turtle pictures suck. Well, what do you have? Do you have any good wood turtle pictures? I'll show you all my wood turtle pictures. The point is we will go back and forth until you're absolutely happy with what you're going to get to hang on your wall. I ran this last year. I had four winners. It was, it was exciting for me. It was just, it was just something new and I like having something extra to add. So please, if you're going to buy a calendar, consider entering my raffle too, because that helps me cover the rise in printing costs. That's it for tonight. I'm going to put all the information in the comments. Please, please message me. If you have any questions, ask them here too, because you know, your question might be somebody else's question and I'd love to answer them. I'd love to talk more. I can talk about animals all day long. That's why I, I sit here and ramble on these things for so long. So get at me people, please. Especially if you can, listen, I have my shoulder getting operated on next week. So the more I can get done before then, the better. Oh, and I should say, these things will be shipped to your door if you're in the United States. You will get them before Christmas, guaranteed. So I've never missed a shipment. 
in eight years. This is year number nine. So if you're going to buy them as gifts, rest assured, I do have 360 calendars on me now, but I'll have to do a second print run because I will definitely be selling a lot more than this. If last year was any indicator, I sold over 600 calendars. So get at me, people. Have a good night. We'll do another one of these maybe after the weekend because I have a lot going on this weekend. But I have nine more calendars to go through, and I will talk to you soon. Have a good night.